Hi, I'm Bart Loser, Program Coordinator for the Continuing Education Program for Toastmasters District 55, here to present a few short tips and tricks for improving your presence on online meetings. Online communication is different, as we all know, but that doesn't necessarily mean less effective. Success is mostly going to come about if you're prepared and aware. And I'm going to show you a few things on how to be more prepared and aware when you're in the meetings. I'd like to keep a simple approach, and you may be familiar with the KISS approach, keep it short and simple. And so I'm going to present two different areas, how to build a connection with others and the tools you need to know. This will just be a basic, but in building a connection, it's important to arrive early for a meeting. Why do you arrive early? Because for one thing, there's always gonna be some glitches in getting your computer ready and making sure you're prepared. You also want to make sure that you have a chance to meet and greet with people at the very beginning to connect with them, which is a key element to all communication. Now we do connect a little bit differently online, but there are some ways to do it by just verbally greeting people or using the chat room and saying, hi, welcome. Now I might chat with some of my guests or others, but there's different ways to be able to connect. And it's an important piece to set that tone for a positive interaction so that anything you say or do will be taken in the most positive way. Now, when you're in these meetings, you also should make sure that if you're not going to be talking at this time, mute your mic. It serves a couple purposes. One of the reasons why you mute your mic is that if there's any background noises, if you've got a pet in the area, like I have a cat that sometimes starts meowing or dog could start barking, you could also have situations such as an emergency vehicle going on coming by your area and people can hear all of that. Plus, if you're typing any notes on your computer, people can hear that. So make sure your, your microphone is muted during those times when you're not speaking. Also, you want to try to avoid any multitasking when possible. I know that we're tempted to want to check emails or other things and keep busy during a meeting doing several things at once, but quite frankly, people can tell when you're not focused. And just like in a speech, if you're not watching or paying attention, or if you're online and you're just like looking bored to people, they're going to tell and it's going to impact your audience. If you have to multitask or step away or do anything that could be distracting to your audience because what they see is what you can see and vice versa, keep in mind, turn your video off so that people don't see your video at that time. You can put a great picture of yourself on there so people may not even be aware you're not there until they realize you're not moving, are you? But the point is, is that you do wanna be seen live mostly, but if there's anything you don't want people to see, turn your video off, and that includes doing any sort of multitasking. The last and most important thing you wanna keep in mind is use your greatest tool, which is your smile. During a meeting, people can see if people are going, looking less interested or looking bored. So always be thinking to smile more. Take a glance at your picture and see what you're looking like to other people. A smile is a great way to maintain that warmth and great presence, and it's going to improve all communication. We have a lot of tools on our Zoom that we can use, and so become familiar with these tools. I'm going to introduce just a few basic concepts. One is the mute button. Get very good at knowing where the mute button is or what your shortcut is. So some people have a little shortcut where you can do an option M and mute your phone and option M to unmute your phone. That's an important thing. Because how many people have been in meetings before when they say, uh, Craig, Craig, and Craig is already talking and yet doesn't realize you can't hear him. So good thing is, the, if you know you're going to speak, unmute yourself very quickly. So that's a great thing. And if you find yourself done, mute yourself. It also lets people know you're done speaking as well. Using video cam options is very important. As I mentioned earlier, if there are any distractions going on in the room, suddenly people are walking around behind you or anything that could be going on that's moving or you happen to wanna to go step away for just a moment, turn your video camera off. So that, now there are other things you could do. You could have virtual backgrounds depending on what software you've got on your computer. If it's a little bit older, you may not be able to use those. But keep in mind with virtual backgrounds, it could be distracting because sometimes the camera can't read where your body ends. So you've got to uh, notice that sometimes you disappear into the background at times and that can be distracting. 
Another option I do with my, my video option is to mirror things so that if I have any script or text that I want to show to you, I want to make sure you don't see it backward like in a mirror. So you use the mirroring process to turn those letters around another way. Keep in mind, ideally, to have it on gallery view when you want to see everybody. But if you want to see the speaker themselves as the primary picture, put it on speaker view, and then you can see a strip of a few other people, and you can move people through the strip if you want to see who else is in the meeting or see specific people. Now, if you really want to see a specific person, such as the timer, pin their window on your computer so that you just see their primary one, and that way you can watch them throughout your speech, and then when you're done, unpin them. But that's a great way to look at one particular person throughout the whole meeting. A couple other great tools to use, the chat feature, especially if you want to suggest something or mention something or vote in the meeting, chat is a great way to do that. So that's uh, one of the things you can do. You can also attach links and documents to your files uh, for other people to see. Although keep in mind, if you put the agenda on there and then people join afterwards, you've done that, they're not going to see it in the chat feature. It's only once you're in the meeting and all those who've seen it, once you list it. Signaling people is important as well. So if you have something to say, you might raise your hand. That way you don't over talk people, which can be a problem in meetings. Make sure if someone's not there, you invite them to the meeting. Perhaps they're looking for the link. You can easily send them that link. And then the share screen is something to really practice at because you may want to do what I'm doing now, which is sharing the screen to share and unshare quickly so that you don't search all around. And take things off of your computer so that when you go to share screen, you don't have too many things on there to have to search for. I realize that's a lot of information, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll present some more information later, but feel free to go to Toastmasters District 55 tmd55.org and check out my resources for online meetings for more information. Thank you.